March 22nd, continued. I was about to record a mating pair of herons building a nest from scratch, and I was trying to get my camera in place and get everything set right. And that's why some of the video in the early parts of this series are a little out of focus. Sorry about that. But by the time I settled in to record them, the herons already had one stick precariously set in place and were ready to start. It's important to note that these sticks are not small. They can be about as big around as your thumb and are often as long as your arm. I'm amazed that they can even carry them up to the nest site, let alone work with them once they get there. The Easts were struggling with this one stick, and both herons were trying to pull it up between the fork of the tree branch, until finally letting go, and losing the first stick as well. It was time to start all over again. If herons could talk, I'm pretty sure I know what they would have said right then. Ten minutes later, they had a new stick and they were right back at it. The ritual was no different for the Easts as it was for the Wests. The stick would arrive, the receiving heron would bow, and then set it into place. But these herons, like any newlyweds, were not in total agreement as to where to put this new foundation stick. As I watched, I realized that these first sticks must be woven into the tree branches, like a basket, so that they don't fall out. And think about the difficulty of that. All of this must happen on a tree branch that sways in the wind and is 30 feet or more above the ground. Their sense of balance is as enviable as their construction skill. And the East would work on this branch for quite some time, trying to get it just right. And everything seemed to be going well. Then they would pick it up and debate where to place it again. The amount of energy they put into this first big stick was amazing. I remember thinking that if they had hands like me, this would be done already. But then, you couldn't get me up there on that spindly branch. The Easts made a lot of contact with each other. I learned that ritualized fighting, dueling, or grappling with their bills is common mating behavior for great blue herons, and it seemed that the Easts were building a strong partnership foundation at the same time they were settling the structural foundation for their nest. After a little bit, I watched as one heron, likely the female, poked its mate with its beak as if to say, let's go, we got a lot of work to do. Herons don't mate for life, but do share parental responsibilities for about two months after the chicks have hatched. They need to, as more than 65% of great blue herons die within their first year. I was taken aback by this number and I realized it made it just that much more special that I was getting to see this. And when it was decided that it was time to look for another stick, the male heron was off and construction was in full swing again. 
and you can see just how much that nest grew on March 22nd in the next part of this series. Thank you.